Praise the Lord, everyone, here again on a Thursday evening. Come together. We're, uh, we've been going through the Gospel of St. John, and that's where we're at tonight. We've done chapters 1 through 4. We're going to pick up on chapter 5, 6, maybe 7, depending on how it goes. And we're going to break down, look at the Word of God, and see what the Word of God says about some very... What John, who was very close to Jesus, actually, and... Um, how John portrayed and for me and all the gospels are good don't get me wrong I love the whole word of God but that relationship John had with Jesus it just seems to stand out to me in the gospel of John in Revelation first second third John all these books that John wrote you can for me it just brings out the uh, the um, the relationship the closeness in his walk with the Lord Anyway, we're picking up here on John chapter 5. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless the reading of this word tonight, Lord. Help us to understand and see you, Lord God, clearly through John's uh, rendition, his, his version of the gospel or the good news, Lord. Ask that, Lord God, you open our understanding, Lord, that we receive, see, understand, and walk in the truths that you show us tonight in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. John chapter 5, starting at verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impudent folk, or sick folk, or or crippled folk, a blind, can't see, halt, can't walk, withered, limbs drawn up, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down in a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole and whatsoever disease he had or of whatsoever disease he had. Now what happened at a certain time of the year, this angel would come to the pool of Bethesda he would reach down and trouble the water. They would see the water move, the ripple, and they would know the angel just touched it. And the first one in the water after that received healing. It's like the angels blessed the water, and the first one in, boom, the blessing went to that person and made them whole. Okay? And this apparently happened uh, every year. I guess it's every year. It says season. I'm going to assume it was a year. Okay? And verse 5, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. So 38 years this man had been sick. When Jesus saw him lie and knew he had not been, and he, or excuse me, he knew he had been now a long time in that case or in that condition, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impudent man answered him, Sir. I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. So this guy's crippled, can't walk, and he's trying to drag himself down to the pool after the troubling, but the other people that are in better condition than him beat him into the water and are made whole. So he never makes it to the water. He's been sitting there, obviously, many years being brought to this at this time to sit by this pool. And hoping to get in to be healed. But he had nobody to help him. No person to help him get in the water. And while he's trying to pull himself down to the water. Somebody else would go in and receive the blessing or the miracle. Okay. Verse 8. Jesus saith unto him. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. Ooh. This is powerful. This is the power of God. Just to speak it. He can still do that. If you believe he can speak into your life healing and deliverance and freedom i've seen it happen i've seen people heal change i've seen demons come out of people i'm telling you right now the power of god is just as strong today as it was then hallelujah jesus saith unto him rise take up thy bed and walk and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the sabbath uh-oh he did it on the sabbath all these religious folk ain't going to like this. Let's see what happens here. 
Okay, verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He made he that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. How about that? He said, The guy that just healed me told me to get up and go. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that had been healed wist not who it was, for Jesus conveyed him away, himself away, and a multitude being in that place, there were so many, he, Jesus slipped out in the crowd and was gone. Okay? Verse 14, Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, found a man again, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, watch this, we've talked about this before, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. How about that? Jesus tells us even now, we got to watch it, the scriptures let us know, we're forgiven when we're given, we're born again, and, and the blood's applied, and we're redeemed, and then the Spirit of God enters into us, God fills us with the Spirit, and we're adopted, but Jesus said, go and sin no more, he told us, man, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. How about that? We don't want a worse thing than we had before, do we? That's why we've got to make sure we walk according to the Word of God, okay? The man departed. And told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. You know, come on, really. We just read in John chapter 3 where Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, We know you're a man come from God, for no man can do the miracles thou doest except God was with him. Nicodemus come and said, We all know. That you are you are a sin of God, and here, knowing he's sin of God, he heals a man. Instead of being happy and rejoicing in this miracle, they're going to come down and you mess with our religious traditions. You healed on the Sabbath, so we're going to kill you now. We hate you for messing up our religiosity. How about that? That's what we're here to do today: mess up people's religiosity. Okay, so many people believe in this false doctrine that's out here today. This this message that didn't. That's not even the original message Jesus and the disciples taught. Most of your Christianity today didn't start till 325 years after the death of Jesus and the apostles when the devil came in and twisted it, okay? At the Nicene Council. All right? You people going around, you believe in a bunch of things, you say you're glorifying God, but you don't even look at the scriptures to see what you believe is not even the truth, okay? And here, Jesus, they were the same way. They had this religious spirit. You'd rather uphold your religious traditions than to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Instead of rejoicing about this healing, he came and healed on the Sabbath. You already said you knew he was a teacher come from God. How dare you hypocrites say and come and accuse him like this now? Amen. But Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto that I, and I work. Verse 18, therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. Boy, they did not like him. He was messing up their religion. Woo, messing up their little church thing they had going on. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Mm -mm -mm. How about that? Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that he may, that ye may marvel, excuse me, for as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. That's right. He heals and blesses and maketh whole, whole who he will. How about that? Let's see. We're on verse 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Now here's the man they all said they knew came from God. 
admitted it. Nicodemus admitted it in chapter 3. They knew he was sent of God, and they don't listen to him. If they knew he was sent from God, then they had to also know that his words were true, and that anything he spoke was true. But again, he came messing with their religion, and oh no, he can't do that. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. How about that? Verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they shall that and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Now, one time he calls himself the son of God, and another time he calls himself the son of man. What's with that? Well, he because he's both. It's the duality of who he is. Because of the flesh, he's the son of man. He was born of Mary. On his mother's side, he's the son of man. But his father was God, so that made him the son of God as well. So, see, he's man and God both. He's the God man. He's the son of God and the son of man. How about that? It really makes sense when you just read it like it's written and take it just like it says. Amen. Let's see. For at verse uh, well, in 26, for as the Father hath, hath life in himself, so he hath given the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment, all because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this. <coughs> Don't be surprised by this, he's saying. For the hour is coming, we just read this. Which all in, are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now look what he's saying here. There's a time coming. All that die are the, the flesh. The glorified bodies are asleep. The spirit goes back to God. But they're waiting. Good and bad are in the graves waiting for the judgment. And he's telling them when that judgment comes and they're all raised up, they'll be raised to judgment. Those that did good unto eternal life and those that did bad unto eternal damnation. How about that? I can of mine own self, this is verse 30, I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Let's see. Alright, verse 32. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth, but I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. How about that? That ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were what you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish the same works that I do here. And I bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Now look, John came baptized and telling everybody to repent, not doing miracles. And for a while they believed and rejoiced in his telling of the coming Messiah. He was the forerunner. Now here Jesus comes doing miracles and things even greater and they don't want to receive him. Why? Because he's messing with their religion. How about that? You know, God's trying to mess with your religion today, trying to make you see and understand that these things that you're believing and following are not what the disciples and the apostles and Jesus himself taught. Okay. There are so many doctrines out there now in just Christianity that take you down a wrong path. They use scripture pretty good, but when it comes to the plan of salvation and it comes to the Godhead and understanding Jesus, they take you the wrong way. Okay? Because you're following what was taught 325 years after 
Jesus and his disciples left. And Paul even said that he knew ravening wolves would come in and not spare the flock. That they would begin to preach things almost right away back then. Even then the devil started deceiving and using people to twist it and get, you know, the only reason it happens like this, <clears throat> excuse me, is the look, God is going to weed out those that are not going to be true. Okay, the those that are doing, your only way, blessed is he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness for he shall be filled. You're not hungry and thirsty for it. You just want to play religious games. You're in the right place. You stay where you're at. You do what you do. But when you get to judgment, don't be surprised and wonder why God told you to depart. He didn't know you. You didn't read the word of God. You didn't obey the truth. You believe something somebody got up just because he got up in a pulpit and preached. It doesn't make it right. Okay? Doesn't make it true. All right? You need to go to the Word of God. You need to understand and believe what the Bible says. That's why we're so big on staying in the Word of God. I say it again. I'll say it again and again and again. I don't tell you anything that I'm not showing you Scripture for. Absolute Scripture for. Okay? Well, I don't believe that. Well, then you don't believe the Bible because it's right there, plain in the Word of God. Okay? Well, what I believe is in the Word of God, show me. Show me where it says you don't have to be baptized in the Word of God. Show me where it says you don't need the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. Okay? You can't show that. You can take a couple of scriptures out of context and try to twist and make it that. But I can show you where it says you have to have those things clearly written in the Word of God. Okay? Hallelujah. All right. John came. He bore witness. They, they listened to John for a while. Then Jesus came. John was executed. And Jesus goes on to actually do miracles. And they don't like it. They don't want him. Because he was messing with their religious beliefs. Their religiosity. Their little, their little setup. Their group. Okay. Amen. Let's see now. First. Hold on a second. Let me get here. Verse 37, and the father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believeth not. Search the scriptures, there you go. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they that are which testify of me. And he's talking about the Old Testament. All the prophets pointed toward the coming of this man. Okay. And ye will not come to me that ye might have it, have uh, have life. Yes, there it goes. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. And how true is that? How many people you see, oh, Jesus is going to be in service tonight. Some preacher, come, oh, so-and-so is going to preach for us tonight. It's all about a man. People will turn out for so-and-so. And somebody else come along, they're really happy about it. They'll stay home that night. But Jesus is in the house all the time. That's who you should be excited about and worshiping and glad for. So how true is this? He's just said, still today. Okay, still today. How about that? Let's see. Search the scripture for them you think you have eternal life, and they are the testify of me, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. We're going to read this one more time. If another shall come in his own name, there it is, him you will receive. How can you believe? This is the verse. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? How about that? Huh? You want honor from men? You want stand up there and preach and have people ooh and ah you? You want to be lifted up on the platform? You took the ministry which should be a position of servitude and humbleness and made it some exaltation where you're fancier, bigger and better than everybody else around you. You live better. You eat better while these people are putting money into the church to make your life better, to make the building bigger, to hang up chandeliers and make it prettier. God's not in that. God is not in that. And that's why these churches are not blessed. 
Oh, well, they're blessed. We have all these people. You wait and see when you stand in judgment if it's blessed, okay? Verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had he believed, had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Wow, man, that's heavy. Still today, the same thing. John chapter 6, verse 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is in the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he, had, he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus already knew what he was going to do. He's checking his disciples' faith and seeing where they're at. Amen. And this is this he said, and he tells you right here that proves this. This he said to prove them, for he himself knew what he would do. See, Jesus already knows what he's going to do. Ooh. He already knows there's no plan B with him. He knows. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what he's going to do. He knows what you're going to do. He's just waiting to see if you'll realize what's right and wrong and make the right decisions because of your free will choice. He's always sitting, waiting, and hoping that you'll make that right decision, already knowing what's going to happen. That's how much that he loves us. Amen. Verse 7, Philip answered him, 200 pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? I love Jesus' math. Let's watch Jesus' math work here. Okay? You're talking about math. He got some. This is God math. All right? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand and jesus took up the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would if i get a little excited a little emotional it's because this means something to me verse 12 when they were filled he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Fragments. How about that? There's leftovers. From five loaves and whatever, two or three fishes it was, there's leftovers. That's God math, okay? God wants to do that math in our lives, too. Not to make you rich and famous, to bless you, to provide your needs, and to make what you won't think go very far. If you give it to God, say, God, this is all I have, but I know you can bless it. He'll meet your needs. And all the people I know that are serving God righteously, and even some that aren't, God has met their needs. He says it rains on the just and the unjust, okay? He puts it out there. And it, on for the unjust so they could bring them to repentance. Excuse me, my nose running a little bit here. Still. All right, amen. And there, wow. And gather the fragments and nothing be lost. So you don't want to, you don't want to waste God's blessings either. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained and above them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, the pro that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. See, they would have come and took him and made him a king. He came to be a servant, not a king. Some of you king pastors and king preachers and you bishops, you call yourselves prophets and apostles. This is Jesus didn't call himself anything. Hallelujah. Mm-mm-mm. 
Verse 16, when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea. Okay, 15, I'm sorry. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when evening was come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come unto them. And the sea arose by reason of great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Not they rowed faster, the ship was just suddenly there. God can supernaturally move and make things happen still today in our lives. He will do this. All we have to do is believe. See, that's the problem. There's not a lot of faith left, I don't think. Jesus says when he returns, we'll even find faith. Faith is in short supply these days. It's particularly in this country. We have the gods of credit cards, banks, air conditioning, all these things that we have that don't require faith. And our faith suffers because of it, okay? Verse 22, the day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat here, save the one where into his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, howbeit they came other boats from Tiberias, nigh to the place where they did eat bread, after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, Neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Now you understand what it's telling you too here. Most of these people were just followed after Jesus for the miracles, for the food, for what they could get out of it. That's some of your prosperity doctrine today. Most of your people, a lot of these people are in Christianity for the prosperity. And the Bible speaks plainly against the prosperity doctrine. Does that mean God doesn't want you blessed? He'll bless you. But to say... That if you're not rich, you're not serving God. If you have to have jets and cars and all that, that is a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible speaks directly opposite of those kind of things. Okay? You're following for the loaves and fishes. You go into church, so maybe you, the preacher will throw his hanky on you or wave his coat at you and say something to you and you'll be blessed with gold dust or gold fillings or a Cadillac or whatever. You're in it for the wrong reason. I'm telling you, the Bible is very clear about that. I know that won't make me very popular, but I didn't expect to be anyway. I'd rather tell you the truth and have you saved than lie to you and lead you to hell. Verse 25, when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me, here he's going to tell you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. They got their bellies filled, right? Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him that for him hath God the Father sealed. Don't seek for the worldly things, the things of the flesh that you can live on and feed on the temporary things, but seek after the eternal things. Jesus said it himself. And he sent it down to his disciples and his apostles. Teach it in the New Testament now. All the word of God harmonizes and is right if you read it right. If you don't take things out of context. I'll tell you what. I have such a, a burden for all this false doctrine out here. That they take the word of God out of context with one scripture here and there. Never checking. Never reading. Never looking. Just believe in, a lot of them don't even read the Bible. They just believe what somebody's saying in a pulpit and go with that. Now whose fault is that going to be when they stand in judgment and hear, depart from me, I never knew you. They have the same word of God you and I have, the same truth, the same Holy Spirit that God wants to fill them with, to bring them and lead them and guide them in all truth, that they might understand the scriptures more clearly. But they don't even seek it because... They don't even try to find out for themselves. They're just happy with what they got. They're seeking the fishes and the loaves. What they can get. Mm. Wow. 
Wow. Verse 28, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign should showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou what dost thou work? Verse 31 And our fathers did eat man in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the, that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Now, he just got done feeding, splitting up fish and loaves. They saw these things. They seen the miracles, and they're still questioning him. Whew. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Going back to where he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me, that all of which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should rise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and that I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, come the religious people again, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Wow, how about that? And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath Learn of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life, and I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And that I will give him is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They're starting to trip on him now. So they don't understand what he's trying to tell them and say, Okay. They just don't get it. They just don't get it. And verse 53 we're at says, Then Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up in the la at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood call, uh, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he ha that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. 
He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. But these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, in the spirit that quickeneth? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh, um, the fa the flesh. Excuse me, my eyes are blurring a little bit. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they give life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were. From the beginning, he knew they were that that believe not. And who should betray him? See, he already knew everything. He knows what's going on. And he said, Therefore I said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He already knew who was going to betray him. He knew one of them would even betray him. He that spake, he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he that should betray him, being one of the twelve. All right, that's five and six. I believe we'll stop there. Amen. Kind of lengthy, but it's important that we go through the Word of God, break it down, and understand it. It's, it's a burden that I have, the Lord's given me, to try to help you and others see and understand what Jesus is telling us. How the Word of God makes sense. It lines up and it harmonizes. It doesn't contradict itself when you take it in the context that it's written. He wrote it just like he meant it, okay? That is the Word of God. Anyway, Lord bless got any questions again i tell you you know how you can get in touch with me via facebook or whoever you've watched this video through i'll be glad to go in more detail if you disagree with something i'll be glad to discuss it with you i'll be glad to let you try to show me in scripture what you believe if it's contrary to what the word of god says amen and then i expect you to do the same but look and see what the word of god says lord bless you appreciate everybody until Sunday, Lord willing, or whenever we Lord opens the door to come together again, I'll, I'll ask the Lord bless and keep you all in Jesus' name. Amen.